with you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Senator Brown, Senator Moran. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you to, to you and to the ranking member, uh, Commissioner, uh, pleased your, by your presence here today. Uh, recently, at the FDA issued uh, guidance concerning antibiotic use by farmers and ranchers in regard to their livestock. Um, was that guidance based upon uh, peer-reviewed science? And the second question is, would you provide this committee with the science on which that guidance was based? Certainly. Um, we did review an enormous amount of literature over quite a long period of time, um, you know, looking at, at these questions. Um, we also worked very closely with all of the critical stakeholders um, as we moved towards putting forward that guidance, which is to, to res restrict the use of antibiotics for growth promotion um, and feed enhancement purposes. Um, you know, I, we actually got a lot of support um, in both the analytic work for that and in the determination to go forward from our colleagues in animal veterinary health um, and the pharmaceutical um, manufacturers involved also, I think, you know, believe that the world has changed considerably and we now know a great deal about the impact of injudicious use of antibiotics and the development of antibiotic resistance that we as a nation and as a global community are facing a very, very serious public health challenge with respect to antibiotic resistance and that, that this can make a real difference um, uh, in order to, to really reduce this public health threat to both humans and animals with respect to ensuring that we have antibiotics that work. I think you were suggesting that there is broad consensus uh, to, to back up in the industry, both the, the, the users, the scientific community, to, to support the guidance that you uh, have issued. Nothing we do ever has consensus, but, um, but we did work hard to listen to the concerns of all of the stakeholders and address them. Is, is, that, is it related to the use? Uh, when you talk about growth, uh, the use for growth, is, uh, I assume that's as compared to treating disease and infection. Correct. Uh, the guidance have any implications on that use of antibiotics? Not for treating disease. Um, we do believe that these antibiotics, just as in human populations, antibiotics are used under prescription and guidance of medical professionals that veterinary um, uh, professionals should be um, overseeing the appropriate use for treatment of disease. Uh, Commissioner, would you work with my staff to, to, to give us a, a, a summary of the scientific basis for that, the, that guidance? Certainly. Thank you very much. Let me uh, uh, express my concern, and, and Senator Blunt uh, raised this topic, but the um, nutrition labeling uh, of standard menu items at chain restaurant provisions uh, was uh, authorized by the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. It, it's my view that that law was intended to provide a uniform standard for chain restaurants with 20 or more locations to comply with various state and local menu labeling laws. And I, the, the concern I want to express is uh, that the expansion of that, uh, those regulations to grocery stores uh, is, in my view, a serious problem. Uh, in fact, the Office of Management and Budget determined that this was the third most burdensome regulatory uh, implementation of any law, of any, any law that's currently be, being implemented, OMB says this is the third largest regulatory burden. They estimated an increase of f over 14 and a half million hours of work and 69, almost $70 million for increased record keeping costs alone. Uh, and I would just encourage you strongly and, and, and insist to the degree that I can that you not take this uh, opportunity to regulate further uh, than is required by the law. Uh, and in part, I would express my concern certainly about the cost that is occurring or, or will occur to uh, the, the grocery store businesses. Uh, and for many members of Congress, I assume that's a large chain. Uh, and we have a bit of that in Kansas. But many of our grocery stores are very small 
They are marginal. We struggle. In fact, I, I remember numerous times in my time as a House member, now as a senator, is telling people that where I come from, economic development can be whether or not there's a grocery store in town. It's a very basic need. And in fact, we're working with the, uh, I'm a co-chair of, uh, of the Senate Hunger Caucus. Uh, we're working with my with colleagues here in the Senate, but with the U.S. Department of Agriculture in regard to so-called food deserts, where grocery stores are not available. And it's often the core center of cities, often rural communities, and the, the, the ability for a grocery store to, to survive is very difficult now, and the burdens that you may place upon grocery stores will exacerbate uh, the, the problem of access to high-quality foods, uh, inclu including fruits and vegetables. And I didn't see in, in what I uh, read about FDA's uh, cost analysis that there were very many benefits as far as calorie intake or health of the consumer related to the additional regulation of uh, grocery stores uh, in, in regard to so-called menu labeling. And I, I want to point out the, the significant increase in cost, but I also want to point out these regulations may significantly damage the ability of uh, everyday Americans who live in places that are already difficult to access quality food. It, it may reduce the access to that quality food even further. I just want to appreciate your comments, but I, I just want to make clear that um, the, the, the law did indicate restaurants and restaurant-like establishments. That was not intended, obviously, to address every single grocery store. But the challenge has been trying to determine there are big grocery stores that have restaurant-like cafes with a menu and prepared food. Um, so that's a very different thing than, than looking at menu labeling of everything that would be sold in a grocery store, whatever. So I just want to make clear that that you know I I think that the the universe that would apply to a grocery store is much smaller than perhaps um, you have uh, understood. We have put out for comment um, various potential strategies for how you would define a restaurant-like establishment. And of course, the issue of, of how to deal with grocery store um, cafes and, and these kinds of prepared foods for immediate consumption. And that's been one of the huge areas of, of complexity and where we're still trying to sort out um, you know, what does make sense in terms of um, benefits to consumers, but not being overly burdensome and having it really be implementable. So I, I take you know, very seriously what you say, and, you know, we, Com we are Commissioner, thank ones. you. Even if it is a large or grocery store, uh, I assume the kinds of things that may get picked up are salad bars and, and uh, fruit stands. Uh, fruits and vegetables are a significant component of increasing the uh, healthiness of the American consumer. Uh, let's make certain that in the quest to, 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 to further regulate, we don't actually diminish yes. the opportunities for uh, I, I can see the circumstance in which a grocery store, if you, if you pursue these regulations, simply decide we're no longer going to provide uh, the, the, the salad bar or the, 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 the opportunity for fresh fruit. It's just right. not worth trying to comply with these regulations that FDA is pursuing. And finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would just uh, express concern about the, uh, the fees that you're talking about. And Mr. Blunt, my time has expired, but uh, the ranking member raised this topic, and, and those are significant increases in cost of doing business that in this economic time can be very damaging to the ability of a business to stay in business.